Hello and welcome from the Mattress Recycling Council and the Bye Bye Mattress Program. Today we are here to share some important information about bed bugs, how to identify them, and how to safely handle and dispose of used mattresses that may be infested with them. Why is this important? There is a lot of misinformation about bed bugs. Yes, these pests can potentially be found on used mattresses, but did you know they can also be found in many other places, including couches, luggage, behind electrical outlets, and even behind picture frames? Did you know they can't fly, jump, or bite, or that they are afraid of humans? Not understanding bed bug behavior can lead to anxiety about handling used mattresses during the recycling process. To alleviate this concern, the Mattress Recycling Council reached out to an expert to help us learn more about bed bugs. Dr. Gail Ridge is the chair of the Connecticut Coalition Against Bed Bugs and is a world-renowned bed bug behavior biologist. She will teach us about their behavior, what to look for, and how to properly respond if identified. She will even debunk a few myths along the way. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Gail Ridge. I am chair of the Connecticut Coalition Against Bed Bugs and an expert in bed bugs. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about bed bugs, um, their life, and how to manage them in your industry. The first slide shows a cavalry troop. Uh, shooting bed bugs with their guns, um, the trumpets going off in the background, and the alarm call is certainly sounded. Um, this is certainly a fantasy that we all have about bed bugs and how to get rid of them, but a little less practical than we would like. Um, the talk will be facts and myths about bed bugs, and uh, I'm going to open first with uh, bed bug evolution. Um, it took 15 years um, with an international research effort to peel away the onion about bed bug evolution. Um, they've been on the planet far longer than first believed, and they evolved before bats, and also do not or have not had any kind of history of co-speciating with people. So this research has blown up a lot of previous uh, assumptions about bed bugs. Um, the research indicates that bed bugs appeared on the earth somewhere between 115 to 122 million years ago in the Cretaceous period. This means they predated the dinosaurs. Um, it rejects the widely held view that bed bugs actually evolved on bats. In fact, they predate bat evolution by at least 30 to 50 million years. Um, it's suspected that they started on birds, which are in fact dinosaurs, and then moved over to bats a little later. The unusual thing about bed bug evolution, contrary to most normal evolution, as it were, is that bed bugs <clears throat> move from being specialists to generalists, whereas many animals uh, move from generalist to specialist. So if you think of the panda bear, all it eats is bamboo. Whereas bed bugs, they started on one group of animals and then broadened their portfolio and eventually included us. Um, they also, as generalists, uh, have a higher level of genetic plasticity, which means they can evolve very quickly if the need arises. Um, the description of bed bugs, basically they're apple seed in size, also the similar color, which is uh, sort of honey brown. Females are more oval than the males. Um, they don't bite. They actually have piercing, sucking mouth parts with delicate little uh, filamentous straws which um, slip into the skin with a little anesthetic. Um, they're in fact very delicate, fussy feeders. Um, there are seven stages of development. Um, the bookends are egg and adult, and there are seven nymphal stages between. Nymphs is a technical word for youngsters, and each time a youngster needs to develop, he molts his skin and becomes an older, more complicated nymph. 
In this particular slide, you can see um, these dark patches at the lower intestinal tract. It's very clear in these images. Um, this is uh, blood that has not been uh, fully digested, but uh, has been stored in the low intestinal tract for unplanned for starvation. So bed bugs can uh, remain um, in a semi-state of inactivity at low temperatures and can survive for up to a year without feeding. The body form, as I had alluded, um, is generally oval. The female are, are broader, more penny-shaped, whereas the males are narrower. Um, the nymphs are miniature forms of the adults, which means they are the very ancient primitive insects. They're not like the modern insect, where you have, for instance, with the butterfly, the egg, the caterpillar, the pupa, and the adult. No stages look the same. All stages in bedbugs do look the same. Um, the honey color or reddish color is actually camouflaged. So when they drop into a crack or crevice that's dark lit, they technically disappear. So the coloration is good camouflage. And as you can see with the nymphs in the bottom right corner against the pinhead, you can, they are very small, but they are not invisible. Um, bed bugs are not the sharpest knives in the drawer. They commute from um, host to a refuge site, a safe place where they can hide. Um, they cluster for many reasons. Uh, they create microhabitats to maintain water. These are desert insects and so um, we have provided perfect environment. Um, what's temperature comfortable for us is temperature comfortable for the insects and they just seek a crack or crevice. In the ancient times this would be a cliff wall or a cave but now we provide modern caves which are homes and so bed bugs will hide as you can see in this um, baseboard in the top right hand image um, showing these insects uh, clustering in the milling behind a baseboard. Um, they are deathly afraid of us and they go and hide as soon as they have fed. So a bed bug will commute from a refuge to the host, you, feed very briefly, and then bolt. Um, the attributes are, is prodigious. Um, in this particular slide, you can see there's like at least 49 traits and behaviors. I'm gonna highlight a few of them, um, which will help you understand the insects. The first trait, is thigmotaxis. This is a drive to have body contact on both the top and the bottom of the body. And bed bugs being flat are suitably perfectly, well, perfectly designed to um, be in a crack or crevice. As you can see in the mattress uh, image in the bottom left corner, you can see a bunch of bed bugs uh, clustering. Um, in the center, that's an imperfection of pla uh, plaster. And again, you, they have clustered up on a wall where they feel safe. The right hand image is a clear uh, image for how infested a mattress can be. If you see a mattress like that or, or bedding, you just you don't bother with it, just pass it along. Um, bed bugs live in what I call, uh, we call refuges. And this video in the bottom left, I will show you. As you can see with this video, a youngster is playing around inside the shed skin of an older insect. The female is resting above in the background and he's fluttering around. This thigmotaxis drives youngsters inside exoskeletons. And as you can see in the top right corner, a youngster peeking out. Um, they're very well protective. So if one was going to use a pesticide, they're in a bubble, they are beautifully protected. So thigmotaxis is a very strong protection for bed bugs. Um, due to international trade, bedbugs have been reintroduced to North America within the last 20 years. And with that, what we have also done inadvertently is increase fertility. Um, when bedbugs are pure line bred, um, as you can see in this chart with control ridge and control harlan, the egg numbers are pretty low. But if you cross those two populations, the egg numbers double. This is called hybrid vigor. So with international movement of goods and services, um, bringing in multi-species of uh, oh, populations of bed bugs, um, you have uh, created a very fertile scenario for bed bugs. 
Um, bedbugs also have individual egg laying behavior. Um, the females will lay clutches of eggs every week to 10 days, feed, mate, and then lay another set of eggs for a week to 10 days, feed, mate, and lay another set. During the egg laying period, the females will hide eggs in um, locations away from the main clutch. Each female has her own behavior and habit. Uh, the image on the top left shows a female who likes to lay pairs of eggs along the line of a piece of card. Top right shows a female who is laying eggs in sequence. She's laying a couple, then she's coming back later to lay more in front. The bottom image shows uh, a couple of eggs away from a clutch, and this illustrates this habit of laying eggs away. This is an insurance policy, uh, insurance policy against um, predation or attack. So eggs that are laid away are less likely to be attacked, and so nymphs can mature in the eggs, emerge, and then you can restart the population. Predation. Bedbugs are a, an equivalent of a rabbit in the animal world, and they are a food source for most insects in buildings, such as cockroaches. Cockroaches are known to hunt down bedbugs. In fact, were used in old ships in the past to clear the ships of bedbugs. Took them about three weeks, but they would wipe out bedbugs within a ship. So the peaking behavior is typical of a prey animal. They are hunted by spiders, ants, house centipedes, anything that's a predator in a building will feed on a bedbug. Bedbugs recently have been found to have extremely elevated levels of an elastic material in their bodies called proreslin. Um, proreslin means that they can, when feeding, expand their bodies, but compared to ticks or uh, mosquitoes, the expansion of the body as a result of a blood feed is not as great. Um, their bodies don't swell as much as those other two blood feeders. So what is going on? What is going on is in fact uh, a couple of things. There's a great deal of sexual competition with bed bugs and uh, males will actually mate with proto-females, the fifth stage nymph females. They lack any reproductive uh, tracts. In this case, this would be a little patch on the belly where the male will insert his reproductive paramir or saber, release the sperm into her open bloodstream, which will then swim to the ovaries uh, for fertilization of the eggs. When a male mates a young female who's not sexually mature, who will then molt into a mature female, he is shortening the biology from egg to a, uh, adult development by a week. So this could be uh, a mechanism for an emergency when a colony is being attacked. Um, and he will just literally mate straight through her body wall. Well, if you don't have an elastic exoskeleton or outer skin, when he withdraws his paramea, she's going to bleed. The elastic body will snap shut and so protect the impacted insect from harm. Tapping is another aspect of bed bug um, elastic evolution. Youngsters are not very strong, and so many will actually stay after they've hatched near the refuge or colony of bed bugs. They need a meal, and so they will jump onto already fed adults and older nymphs that have returned from foraging, pierce the body wall, take a blood meal so that they can sustain themselves until they can molt into a second stage nymph, which is stronger and more able to travel. Um, another aspect is stacking. The older adults that are now not sexually active and are not reproducers, they live past their reproductive life, um, will generally aggregate on the outside of a cluster of bed bugs or the refuge to protect youngsters and reproductive adults below. And with that, um, if they are plucked off by a cockroach that's passed by or there's some insect or pesticide spraying, they will take the hit and are lost to the colony and they will likely then protect more vulnerable members in the population underneath. 
Um, pesticide resistance behavior is also another aspect of bedbug survival. The top right image shows uh, Harlan line bedbugs. These are bedbugs have been isolated from um, society and the world, as it were, for at least 40 years. Um, they were picked up by Harold Harlan, who is an entomologist for the army. And he has been um, using them as baseline research animals throughout the United States because they've had no pesticide exposure for 40 years. And yet when they were exposed in, exposed in this particular test that I ran to some laced um, filter paper that they were allowed to run on, they backed away and hung to the wall of this test arena and survived the test. The Irvington, New Jersey population subsequently had the same exposure but died because they were repeatedly running over the surface of this pesticide treated filter paper. Hitchhiking, youngsters again not, are not very strong so they will cling to adults or older nymphs on the underneath of their bodies and if you watch the sequence of images going from the top left to the central right to the bottom left you can see this youngster climbing out from underneath an adult. So youngsters will feed simultaneously with older insects on a host and then uh, ride back home. So they get a taxi service. Meals on wheels. Facts about bedbugs and myths about bedbugs. Um, bedbugs are building pests. They're actually not human pests. Um, because um, we associate them with us, we don't consider that they are actually generalist feeders, so they could feed on other animals within a building if allowed to do so. They generally don't want to. The uh, species that uh, feed on humans, namely the uh, tropical bed bug and the common bed bug, have really adapted to us, so they much prefer us. So they are building pests, they live in a building, and they come out to feed on us. They look after us because they don't give us any diseases or disease-causing pathogens, unlike mosquitoes and ticks that can actually kill you. Bed bugs are actually the safest blood feeder you can imagine, so they actually kind of look after you. Um, bed bug numbers on, on mattresses are extraordinarily low, maybe one to two percent. Uh, a research, research has, has seen this, so the likelihood of you running into bed bugs while at work is pretty low. Um, they do not jump, they do not fly, they creep. They have legs off to the side because they are crack and crevice insects and so they crawl along, they don't go at great speed. The myth about bed bugs is that they're associated with dirty people, dirt. It's not the case. Often um, if you are cluttered, um, bed bug populations will increase because there's more hiding places so you don't actually see them. But uh, they feed, my first calls for bed bug identification came from the Gold Coast, the wealthy uh, demographic area in Connecticut, not from the poor uh, inner city folks, but actually from the wealthy people with means because they could travel. They're the ones that can travel and they will brought the bed bugs back in here. Um, bed bugs feed in rows and the old saying, bed. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is an urban myth. It's stuck. Um, they are fussy capillary feeders, and so we don't have a straight capillary in our bodies. Um, and they don't like people. They don't like to be on people. Um, people associate that bed bugs are on your clothes um, and uh, live in your hair. I've had people say this, like lice. If a bed bug is found on clothing, it does not want to be there. It's trapped. It was caught lightly on some clothing that had been put down. It had found a little corner that it was felt it was saved and then it was picked up and carried from place to place. It's not clothing that bed bugs are in, it's in the building structure itself that generally they are found. Um, this is a picture of uh, Sturbridge Village. I visited this and I was very interested in the bed. The old saying, night night sleep tight don't let the bed bugs bite, is a result of old beds. They used to use roping to hold the mattress in and they would tighten the rope at, at night time so that you would have a comfortable night's sleep. So, treat bed bugs as a building problem, not a personal problem. Um, people often attack the messenger. In fact, people should in fact thank somebody for alerting everybody to 
a bed bug issue. You know, if you think of a herd of animals like um, wildebeest, if there's one animal that spots a lion coming over the hill, he's going to tell everybody, and everybody's pretty thankful, and they run in the opposite direction. People have this tendency to attack the messenger. It's the last thing you should do. If somebody says, I'm suspicious of bed bugs, you should be thanking them and telling them, we're going to check this out. All right, and the faster the reporting and the faster the response and more cooperation with people, the quicker bed bugs are picked up and institutions that practice that uh, principle do not have a problem with bed bugs. Um, so we have this massive stone on our shoulders called stigma. And it's our inability to function around bed bugs um, that causes uh, bed bugs to survive within buildings. It actually aids them. So being educated is extremely important, and this is why I'm sitting here talking to you. Um, you understand there is a psychiatric element about bed bugs. People freak out. I've in fact had people go into a catatonia in front of me when I've told them that they've got bed bugs. It's deeply psychiatric. Um, people lack ability to communicate, fear of being evicted by the landlord, fear of being finger pointed as being a dirty, unclean person, um, across the board. This is a human issue. And again, people are not communicating. There are also predators in, with two legs um, uh, that can uh, take advantage of people who feel vulnerable when they've got bed bugs and also mischief and dishonesty. Uh, I had a case where a girlfriend broke up with a boyfriend and then inserted bed bugs on the, under the door and gave him bed bugs. So people can use bed bugs as weapons as well. Uh, scavenging, uh, picking up mattresses um, off the street. If they've got bed bugs on, they can be introduced to a building. And also extreme clutter, as I mentioned before, um, can hide bed bug populations from view. Um, secondhand stream uh, is much better now. Um, people are much more knowledgeable about ba managing bed bugs in secondhand stream. And so there's less activity there. And also in vehicles, um, cleaning vehicles after a day's work is, is a good idea, just in case a bed bug has got into a corner somewhere. Um, corking vans, delivery vans, or uh, containers on the inner um, cracks and crevices. So it will certainly impede bed bugs from hiding in a corner and getting out of sight. Canine inspection is very good if you have a good dog team. The National Entomology Scent Detection Canine Association, based in Florida, has an excellent program. And uh, in Connecticut, we have some two excellent teams. Their licensing is on their website. So if you go to National Entomology Scent Detection Canine Association website, you can see the licensed dog teams in your particular state. Um, also, teams will cross over into other states. Um, so it's important to know about these dogs. Um, they're extremely good at finding bed bugs. Uh, it costs about $20,000 to train the dog. Um, they will pick up a single live egg. They will not signal on dead material. So having, if you, if you, can, if you have funds, having dog team uh, zip through your plant every couple of months to check out. That's fine, peace of mind, but they're a good dog team. Watch out for charlatans. Um, you need to make sure that the uh, team is properly certified. Um, decision points in far, as far as picking up um, uh, mattresses, you know, driver and transfer station uh, scenarios. Um, clearly on the left-hand image, it's hopping with bed bugs. Well, you can destroy it, you can uh, not accept the mattress. But the mattress on the right seems clean, that's one that can be picked up and brought to your place of work. There are some businesses that would like to process mattresses with bed bugs on them, that's perfectly fine. What you can do is vacuum. Get a shop vac out and just vacuum seams and cracks and crevices. Uh, bed bugs cannot adapt against physics. They cannot adapt against suction, and the dust and debris and the action and activity um, inside a vacuum cleaner will kill them. They're very delicate little insects. What to look for? Um, light infestations are possibly the hardest to find. Um, so when you're looking for these light infestations, look for ink, black, dot, clusters, and smudges. Anything that is brown or red 
um, as dots or smudges on a mattress is usually the result of food or um, blood from the, a person who's been sleeping. Um, bed bug activity is generally black dots, that's digested blood shed from that lower intestinal tract uh, as we saw earlier in the presentation. And this mattress on the right, I want you to take a look at it. There are a couple of spots there that indicate bed bug activity. Take a look. These arrows are going to show where they are. It is also important, as I'm bringing up these, these sentences, that seeing bed bug fecal material does not mean there are live bugs on the mattress. Okay, many of these bugs will have died from exposure from being outside or actually from being eaten, picked off by birds. Um, so if that mattress has been lying around for a while, um, most of the often bed bugs have um, been killed. So containers, uh, containers and bed bugs. Um, heat at 113 degrees Fahrenheit will kill all bed bug stages. Um, but make sure that there is space or spaces between the mattress so air can flow between the mattresses. If the mattresses are heavily packed, then there can be some insulation effect and bed bugs can be protected from high temperatures. Um, temperatures above 106 can kill bed bugs um, slowly, but what actually does get killed is the um, gut organisms or the symbionts within the intestinal tract that helps them digest blood. 106 will slowly kill bed bugs through stress, but that takes a long time. High humidity, any high humidity above 95 uh, will kill bed bugs because they will drown. Again, this is a desert insect, they can't tolerate water. Temperatures under 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit will paralyze them. There are uh, insects, so they depend on outside temperature to be able to move and stay warm enough for their muscles to function. So you basically lock them in place. Um, cold temperatures under deg 20 degrees Fahrenheit will kill bed bugs. It will stress them out after two or three days. Um, but you again, make sure those mattresses are spaced apart so the cold can get inside. Uh, note that bed bug bombs do not work in containers. I do not advise it because of mattress mass. And also most of these uh, bed bomb bombs have residuals and that could be harmful to um, workers who are going to be manhandling or person handling or lady handling those mattresses. Um, this is a photograph I took at the Park City Mattress Recycling in Bridgeport, Connecticut. They uh, run a beautiful establishment. It's clean and it's tidy. And as you can see, some of those mattresses are uh, bagged. It's not, it's not necessarily um, necessary for you to bag um, uh, mattresses. Useful if you're protecting mattresses uh, from water damage, but basically bed bugs can move in and out of this kind of plastic material without much difficulty. You have to have specialized bags to contain bed bugs on mattresses. So it's a waste of energy. Um, so at transfer stations, people also need to understand, as I said before, bed bugs will not jump on you. Um, they will not fly at you. They don't have wings. Uh, they don't hop, they can't. Okay, they are deathly afraid of you and actually will choose to run and flee from you. Or they will just freeze in place, hoping that you don't notice them. So suggested strategies at work. Remain calm, don't panic, communicate and cooperate. Be a team. If you're a team, bed bugs don't stand a chance. Um, proactive inspections. Have somebody who knows what they're looking at to go around the plant every so often, check things out, check out the mattresses. Have a small spray bottle of soapy water to spray on anything that you find that you are suspicious. Um, and keep it just in case you need to have somebody who's an expert uh, identify them. Um, often there's been cases where bat bugs or chimney swift bugs have been picked up on mattresses. And that's not uh, the same species as human bed bugs and they actually don't feed on people. 
Um, have a contact person for identification in your back hip pocket, as well as somebody who's competent and uh, will provide you with reliable information. Usually somebody at a university will be the best option or a government agency, such as my agency, the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. Have a pest management professional on call so that you have everything lined up before you need to uh, do some correction if you have to. Vacuum cleaner is your best pesticide. So have a good chop vac and a crevice tool. And you can see that crevice tool in the central image on the right. Um, that is your weapon of choice. Again, as I say, bed bugs cannot adapt against suction and physics. If you feel uncomfortable, you've been ha uh, wrestling mattresses and you're not quite happy about a particular one, have a change of clothes at work. Take the clothes that you've been working on that mattress with off and then uh, switch into a fresh outfit. Have a dryer at work so you can put those suspicious clothes uh, into a dryer. 20 minutes of high temperature will kill everything. Um, and never use over the counter pesticides. Um, many bed bug populations are now pesticide resistant uh, through misuse of pesticides overseas. They came in pesticide resistant to the States. And also um, there are, there's strong evidence that many of the pesticides uh, are intended not to work. You know, you won't get all of them. And basically if any are killed, they are killed by drowning um, and they drown very easily. So don't, don't spend over the, any money on the over-the-counter pesticides. And so if you wish to have more information, um, go to your university websites, uh, extension service websites in your particular state, or you can come over to the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station website. And on the front page, you'll see a list of uh, subjects, and one of them is bed bugs, and you can get a lot of information off that particular website. So it's been a pleasure talking to you. Enjoy your work. Don't worry about bed bugs. You'll be fine. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Ridge, for that important information. Bed bugs can be an unfortunate possibility in the mattress recycling process. As a reminder, mattresses with bed bugs are not eligible for recycling. They should not be delivered to a collection site or recycler. Now you know the facts, and you know how to identify bed bugs and safely dispose of contaminated used mattresses. For additional how-to videos about mattress recycling, visit mattressrecyclingcouncil.org forward slash resources, or contact your local Mattress Recycling Council program coordinator for further assistance. Thank you for being a part of the Mattress Recycling Council's Bye Bye Mattress program. With your help, we are a global leader in mattress recycling, keeping used mattresses from the waste stream and creating a greener earth. There's more to every mattress.